Hey everybody, it's me. But guess who we have today? The amazing, talented, funny, nice, helpful mentor type of Jimmy Earl. Here he is, folks. Hi, Jimmy. Well, how are you doing? Thanks for the invite. Yes, you bet. What you got going on in your life? Oh, just relaxing. I was just uh, cleaning out the garage the last couple of days. It's kind of a cathartic, therapeutic, running into old memories. And uh, I ran into this box full of my uh, boys' chess trophies. That was pretty emotional for me. So. Oh, what ages are your boys now? 20, 21 and 22. Oh, and which one is now almost graduating from the University of Oregon? Woo! Um, that's the 21 year old. He's a senior and his last quarter, the school is shut down. So he was, uh, he was pretty bummed out this spring break when he was home. I mean, that would be so disheartening, you know, not to be able to have that graduation stuff. I know, and uh, it's, I don't know, kind of the internal politics going on is the, the university, uh, even though they're a very financially, uh, fiscally responsible institution, they are not, they are not giving any kind of payback or refunds or, or compensation for this last quarter so a lot of students are up in arms so let's see what happens with that that's horrible i hope they get get that pushed through yeah that's not fair yeah let's see what happens they they, they say this online thing costs as much but whatever whatever we'll see what happens gotta get uh, get phil knight involved yeah, well, I think that's the problem. Maybe he's too involved. I, I'm just joking. I, <laughs> dude, yeah, they get new uniforms every game, but uh, can't compensate the the seniors for their last quarter. But whatever. If you get an online petition going, I'll sign it and get other people to sign it. That's ridiculous. I think my son said there was some demonstrations going on, but uh, nothing, nothing uh, came of it. But if you line up all the students six feet apart, it'll go around to Eugene a few times. Yeah, yeah, probably. At least, <laughs> go, down to, at least go down to Medford. <laughs> well, I, I'll call up. I don't care. I'll call up Phil Knight, and I'll tell him to just do it. Pay them kids back. Take it out of your pocket. I think it's beyond. It's not Phil Knight. It's, uh, oh, I forget what that provost what his name is or yeah. whatever the president or the provost or somebody needs to dig into them deep pockets yeah that's it his name is shill shill oh great <laughs> there's always a shill in a crowd <laughs> well, uh, i'll keep you updated on that i'm not quite sure uh, i'm not quite sure how that's gonna end good night so that's your younger boy and you found some of his memorabilia that made you emotional, made you nostalgic. And then you've got the older son. Now, what's he doing in his life? He lives in Arizona, and he's uh, just working, trying to figure out his path. So uh, I ran into a couple of his things, his old hockey equipment, his old his chess trophies. And it was pretty, uh, it's pretty I was assembling all of them. And uh, yeah, it was pretty, uh, pretty emotional. Yeah, I can imagine. Every I know. remember, my Kalen, the Oregon kid, he finished when he was in kindergarten. I think he finished fourth in the state one year. The runner, Kalen Rupp. Yeah, he finished uh, fourth in the state in chess as a kindergartner. But what's funny about him is he had this he had this mental block uh, facing Asians, so he would look at. <laughs> He would look as he would look at his opponent's name, and he'd come running up to me, Dad. There's no way I'm gonna win this. Why? <laughs> his last name, his last name is Wong. I go, who cares? It doesn't matter. <laughs> I always lose to Chinese people. <laughs> Guess he always will. <laughs> Situation yeah. solved. Check. <laughs> yep. He had. I guess his opponent had the 
long name. See what I did there? <laughs> yeah. I wonder how, you know, like I, I have a few uh, low-hanging fruit Chinese, you know, lines, and I'm like, one of my favorite, I'm sure it's not theirs, is how do they feel in America when it's an erection year? Whoa. Family thread. <laughs> Family thread, Linda. <laughs> That must be a lot of pressure, you know, the year of the what? The year of the dick. <laughs> it's the election year. The year of the dick, cock, whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, really, but his opponents really was, it really was a Wong. And uh, he would really, because uh, he would always face them because he'd always uh, do the same tournaments as, he goes, I can't beat that kid. I think it was maybe too much pressure on him as a kindergartner. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this, you know, like you have, you are the most humble. If I did in my comedy career, one eightieth of what you've done, I would be out like with a megaphone telling people under bridges, but you don't, you're not like that. You're like, whatever. I just, got lucky you know or yeah you know i'm just doing what you do you do the grind you know hell you have been on stages with big huge i mean like how many times can i underscore this and you you don't brag about it what's up with that i think i do brag about it too much at really? least my wife tells me at least my wife says i do <laughs> yeah i every time i see a post i'm going Man, I am so almost famous, you know, like kind of like LinkedIn through you. I'm becoming like almost, almost a thing. <laughs> the other thing too is I think I hang out with like my, my buddy in comedy, his name is Diego, this other guy, JR. And I think we're all, we're all pretty grounded. And I think it's important to be grounded. I don't know, at least for us. What I like, what I, no, what I love about you is not only your humility, but I love the fact that you give new talent a break. You'll book brand new talent. Like the host that you had, whatever his name was, at that show you put me on, last time you saw me, I bombed so bad. <laughs> Baghdad was hiding. And then, and then you put me on a show. You didn't even know if it was any better or not. And the host, come to find out, he slayed the room. I never saw a better host. Never. And you were telling me, like, he's brand new. I think that was, like, his uh, second or third time on stage. And that's kind of where, you know, kudos to you for doing it. But that's kind of like the most beautiful thing that you can do is reach back the same way you were helped. Did you get people that gave you breaks before you thought you were ready for them or? Did, you mean, did uh, comics give me breaks you're saying? Is that yeah, what you just, yeah. Sorry, the connection. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, Edwin San Juan, I mean, that guy is the epitome of humility. He's been on Showtime. Tommy Chung's 420 special. Um, he had this. He's a resident comic at uh, at uh, Planet, or, or not, Planet or, Hollywood. Uh, Hollywood, and that guy is the most grounded, humble person. And and he was one of the first people um, I worked with. So you know, his humility kind of hopefully rubbed off on me. Yes. And it, it's just my circle. Usually we're try to be self-aware try not to get too only because comedy you can't you can't get too high on yourself because there'll be that one out of five performances that will remind you how bad you suck <laughs> and that's why i think that's why our group we try to stay grounded because we know that 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 horrible set is around the corner so we try to Try to stay grounded and uh, keep it real. That's amazing. So since you have such a heart for new talent, and, you know, new talent seems to hang around me, <laughs> um, what would you like to say that's encouraging for some of the people I find under bridges to get up on stage? 
to encourage them as new talent? I don't know. You know, the thing that I did probably year one or year two is I created my own stage time. I try to create my own quality stage time. Don't wait. I mean, don't wait for it. Don't wait for people to ask ask you to get on their shows. Just try, just try to create your own stage. And I just, for some reason, that stuck with me. And and what happens is when you create your own quality stage time, you start you start building a following. One, so your show is somewhat full you know, half full. And, um, and then at that point you can kind of trade with uh, other comics and other areas that you'd like to trade with. Like that was the big thing that I did is I traded with comics in Phoenix and LA and I traded with comics who had shows in San Francisco. And that's kind of how that was my, my model. Nice. That's great. Yeah, building building good solid rooms um, in in quality comedy clubs, and then trading with uh, other guys in other markets seem to seem to work out. Yeah, it has. So, what's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you in your comedy life, on stage, after a show, in your room when somebody messages you something crazy? I think it was year three or year two. Do you know who the Seroptimists are? Have you heard of them? Yes. So a a Seroptimist group near Sacramento invited me to do comedy. And it was a very nice, but you know what I'm going to say? I think it was about 12, maybe about a thousand. I'll say it was around a thousand. Wow. to, To headline a show. And there was, I had no business headlining a show in year two. So anyway, uh, so I bombed. I, I bombed so hard. Luckily, they had a casino night before I went on, so at least <laughs> the whole night wasn't wasted. I, I bombed so hard that when she was writing the checkout, she looked up at me and asked me, "Do you want all of it?" <laughs> That's said, hilarious. Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> So that was probably the, the worst, uh, the low point of this whole journey. But um, two, they they hired me the following three years after that, and I kind of uh, I produced it instead of them, and I was the host at one of them, and then feature on the other. I I didn't headline, thank goodness, and I got them some pretty solid talent. So I kind of made up for that horrific bomb. Oh, that's wonderful. You have, you know, you're like a mentor to other people. You take people that other, you know, like there's certain comics that are bookers, like I'll call you a booker and like you take people, maybe, you know, you take a gamble on people and it's worth it to you because of the kind of person you are. Is this uncomfortable, by the way? I'm, I'm lying in bed. Is this is this kind of? No. What bothers me is that I think that I my head looks bigger, but that's kind of been my problem since childhood. I have this I have this pornographic like blanket. I don't know what's. I just hope it doesn't come across as kind of creepy. No, no. It looks like you're real comfortable. I really am. Absolutely. I was you know slaving in the garage for the last two three hours, so. Do you ever get afraid of bugs? I'm afraid of bugs. Yes. Well, I I lived in Arizona for many years, so the bugs here in Sacramento are are it's nothing. Arizona, you had you had weird ass spiders, snakes, rattlesnakes. There's always rattlesnakes in our garage. We had tarantulas climbing our bedposts. We had gila <sighs> monsters. We had we had some crazy shit when we used to live in Arizona. Oh my gosh, a tarantula! I would be so out of there. Holy totally. Yeah, I had to. I get a hockey stick and I shot it out the door. Nice wrist shot. I didn't kill it. Everyone, calm down. I just shot it out the door with a nice wrist shot. But yeah, it was pretty furry and gross looking. Ugh. Did you yell out at at it? Did you yell out, "Get the puck out of here"? I see what you did there. <laughs> Good one. It was. It was a. My hockey 
Hockey Stick is a very Arizona critter. It's a good Arizona critter uh, weapon. So yeah. the Hockey Stick always came out when I, we had the rattlesnakes and the tarantulas. Lot, oh, we have a lot of scorpions here. Oh, Lordy, no. Yeah, you got to bang your shoes here in Arizona when you used to live there. You got to bang your shoes before you put them on. That's an Arizona thing. Good yeah. Lord. Yeah, pretty scary. Wow. Um, I'd like you, I'd like my people to get to know a little bit about the side of you that's a hockey player. Because, I mean, everybody knows what a comedian is like, but they don't know what you're like when you're not putting on your game face on stage. What? Tell me, tell my people about your hockey connection. I'm not that great. I, I'm, I, I'm just lucky. I think the reason why they put me on their teams is because my brother is a first line. He's a really good, good first line player, and so the team goes, "Well, let's just have his brother tag along so we have, uh, he has someone to hang out with." So, <laughs> my brother, I don't think I'd be uh, on some of these teams, but yeah, I play. Uh, I try to play two twice a week in a rink here in Sacramento, and. Um, it's fun. Keeps me, keeps me uh, a little bit in shape. Yeah. Get yeah. my cardio. Get my cardio in. But uh, by no means am I uh, a ringer. So let's let's uh, let's get rid of that notion. I'm an exercise aholic, and yep. um, so I was I was born with upside down beer bottle legs. Let's just face it. And I got I got to get that hold on upside down your okay, got it. Yeah, that and so I researched you know like what happens when the girls at Radio the Rockettes at Radio City Music Hall when they do all those leg kicks is that what makes their legs look good? Come to find out yes it is. So I interviewed one of them in, when I was in New York, and they do 2,000 leg kicks a day, plus all oh. their routines. So I, right. now, I now do 2,000 leg kicks a day. What the hell? How long does that take? 35 minutes at the pace I do it. I'm a, I'm a nut. I, like, I got it down to a science. That looks like, uh, is that like a cartoon? You know the cartoons when you can't see their legs? They go like it's a blur? Is that what is that what goes on at your your place? No, surprisingly, it do, you don't really oh, even no have reason. to go that fast. It, it in two thousand adds up really fast. Really? Yeah. Like oh, if you figure if you do one every second, that's sixty a minute. I hate math, but if it's gonna get my legs looking better, I'll do the math. <laughs> and so almost you know a little more than half of a hundred every minute and that's super easy you can do three to seven a minute without killing without winding up in the emergency room i'm gonna try i have nothing but time so i, I might i might have to try that yeah try that. it's fun you go like you do like the rockets you go one way and then the other way yep do you and sometimes your legs will tighten up you know, because you're using the front muscle. So then I'll do the leg kicks to the side, you know, cross leg kick. And I'll, even lunges count as a leg kick in, in the exercise world. Maybe not at Radio City Music Hall, but. The young kids are, the young kids are going, what the hell is a rocket? <laughs> Maybe we should talk about Smurfettes. <laughs> Google Rockets and it'll it'll explain what we're talking about. Yes. Let me try that. Two thousand kicks in. Okay. Yeah, goes fast. You wouldn't think it would, but it does. So yeah, crazy. So how are you? Uh, are you holding up with uh, no stage time? Well, uh, I have so many jokes to go through and figure out which jokes are going to go in which of my new sets for when we get the all clear signal. And um, I'm, I, I got to get on some of these online stand-up mics or whatever, try to get on some online shows. But right now it's just me and the cockroaches, and uh, they don't seem to be too interested. I don't, okay, I don't, so I'm not trying to depress everyone, but I just don't see this, I don't see this thing changing here for a while, unfortunately. I'm with you. 
I'm thinking, uh, you know, South Point, Gabe Lopez uh, and South Point aren't planning anything until after Labor Day. Yeah, see, that's what I'm... Because even if, say, this this arc flattens out, it's no one's it's there it's not going to be the same no one's going to want to be close to other people from now on so i really think it's going to change well one our local store they now put up a plexiglass you know so that's going to cost money uh the whole routine of preparing food is going to change and cost money um i think the airport travel is going to be different now we might eliminate that middle seat I, i'm guessing i don't know yeah, there you and go. Flying is going to be expensive. People don't want to. So I, I think that comedy clubs, if they do reopen, it's good. The capacities might be cutting. They might cut the capacity down a little bit to kind of keep the distance from uh, customer to customer. Yeah. So I, I, really, I really think it, this is this is going to change everything. Right. You know, like when you have people six feet apart from each other, the group dynamics for comedy goes way down. It does, but you still need, you know, if it's a crowd, I would rather a crowd of 20 than doing comedy in front of my uh, fireplace, you know? That's true. It's just, it's just so hard. Part, most of my act is so much crowd interaction and, pauses and facial expressions that I don't think it will translate very well in front of a fireplace. So that's, that's why I'm not going to even try. <laughs> you know, with this shutdown and like you say, I believe like you that it's going to be a while and it's going to really change the comedy landscape. I wouldn't mind a bit if I just interviewed other comics and once in a while got on stage while I'm figuring out with all my jokes which ones make sets, you know. I've got one good set that you saw and the rest of them make, I don't even want to look back at the others. This is where I, you know. Let's get the, let's get the record straight. I didn't say you bombed last time I saw you. No. I, just rec- I just suggested that uh, Tried to do it without bringing notes. That's all I said. I know. I didn't say that you did horribly. Oh, no. Thank you. I'm sorry if I put words in your mouth. But I say I bombed. Sorry if I projected that. No, but um, it's it's sad that this happened now because, like I, your last set you did at my show in Vegas, you, you did really well. And I, I really think it was going to go, you were going to go nothing but exponentially higher if, if this, if we didn't have this nonsense going on right now, it's just too bad. Thank you. Well, fortunately, you know, everywhere I go, I do practice my stuff. I haven't yet bothered anybody to listen for five or 15 minutes, but I do have a, a longer version of what you saw that's 15 minutes, and I need to get that out and practice that and my five-minute set, too. So I... I would say uh, uh, record some of it and send it to us. Send it to my buddy Diego and myself, and uh, we'll definitely uh, give you some input. Thank you. We, whatever it's worth, we'll definitely give you input. I know Diego's very helpful. I'll do that. Thank you so much. He's always been helpful to the the newbie local scene, probably more than I I am, just because I'm I'm busy. I'm pretty busy busy guy. He's really busy too, but he really. He really does help the the newbie, the locals in town. He's he's very uh, gracious with his time. But yeah, definitely, if you uh, want to send us some clips, I will. I'll get on that this week. That sure. gives me encouragement because, you know, I like getting feedback. We can't meet in person really, and sometimes when you perform, people don't want to give you feedback. And whenever you can find anybody that's willing to give it to you, take it. I'm take it from in everybody that wants to give it. Is it is it uh, is, is it the wrong forum for me to bring up that you have you have this condition where you have to bring up notes? Can we talk about that? Absolutely, let's do it. Okay, so I think if you had a mind fart during your set, I think that would be funny. Okay. 
I think you should, if you lose track of where you are or you mix up two jokes, um, be comfortable with it. Just let it happen. Don't be so stressed out. Don't be so stressed out if it does happen. That's really good advice. Um, part of that is that authentically, um, yeah. I need to be that type of person all day. So when I go out of my apartment and I lock myself out or I throw out my debit card and need to wait seven days to get a replacement like what has happened this week. Jim, you just laugh. That's funny. <laughs> Thank you. I've yeah, said... Yeah, like cartoons or like a comic strip. I can see the question mark above your head and your thought bubble. <laughs> Where did I put my credit card? No, that's what I that's what I liked about Diego when I first met him. He was just he was so uh he has this social disorder and he's just he's always kind of uh looking to the ground and doing some weird motions when he does his set and just makes him unique. Yeah. So you, uh, when you uh when you kinda have your mental farts, just try to try to include it in your set just because, I don't know. It it'll hopefully down the road it'll blend and it'll It'll be funny, but to you right now, you're, you think it's not funny, but I don't know, from other, other people's perspective, I think it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> One time, I don't know if you heard me in, at the Portland Comedy Festival, but I have said on stage, you know, that I got hit by a drunk driver and I'm not complaining. I'm half Jewish and it was free. And that's kind of low hanging fruit. And I'm throwing out a brain injury and I'm Jewish and expecting them to laugh, make the connection and laugh, you know? And then yeah. like, there's gotta think, be better ways. I think the other thing too, back then at the Portland was, um, your material is funny. It's just that I think it's a little, might be too cerebral for some, some people. Like it's like a, it's like I'm playing a Scrabble or playing some mind exercise game when I hear your set. I'm not putting it down, but I think it needs to, <laughs> maybe, maybe I am, but it's, uh, I got to think about it sometimes. I'm like, wait, what is she trying to say? Jewish, drunk driver. Sometimes it's hard to make the connection, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And that's, that could be funny in itself because I could, Ooh. I could be up there and say, maybe you didn't make the connection, but isn't that weird? Cause I'm the one with the brain injury. No, I mean, yeah, exactly. Just whatever happens on stage, just make it part of your set. Don't be, uh, don't be crutched by your uh, notes or your condition. I want, you know, I think you should let that condition out. I think it'd be funny. Okay. Thank you. That's great encouragement. I will try working that in again from that point of view. Yeah. If you, I wish that you could see Diego. Anyways, we're talking about Diego Curiel. He's a local comic from Sacramento area. I think he's been in the game for eight years, but when I first saw him, I mean, he was the most fidgety, spazzy comic I've ever seen. And I swear to God, it just made me laugh. <laughs> so, so unique his delivery. So that's, that's kind of what you don't want to be. You want to be kind of a unique guy. Did you see the Ron Jossel interview this week when I interviewed him? No, I did not. And I'm going to go back and look at that. Is it still up on your page? Yeah, I only bring it up because he said the only way to be a unique comic now is to be a trans, transsexual, one-legged, <laughs> one -legged, bald comic. And I mean, his point, I get his point, because you really, you got, you really have to be so unique with a, such a unique slant. You know, I still feel I'm not a Filipino comic. Is is a Filipino old comic? It's not. It's not so unique, but but I, his point is, you know, you, your uniqueness, your own story, I think, is what's so important nowadays in this in this uh, comedy scene. And that's why, you know, shoot, if you have brain farts because you got hit by a drunk driver, I say let it out. <laughs> I was talking with my coach last night, Gladys Simon in New York. She has the Gladys Simon room at Comic Strip Live that Jerry Seinfeld built the room for her. Anyway, she's a great coach, right? She was telling me, you know, your whole persona shouldn't be that you're old. I think that's the wrong persona. It should be that 
you just do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> well, she's right because that's what I think when we see you, we're gonna we're expecting those jokes, right? So I think when you don't talk about it, that's another way you could stand above or be unique. Is not talk about. It. It's like um, Ron also brings up, um, say, like East Indian comics who don't talk about that they're East Indian. <laughs> you know, he says that's such a unique perspective. Yes. And I think Diego doesn't have a lot. He's a he's a Mexican, but he doesn't have a lot of American Mexican jokes. He has a few, but not a lot. I think that also kind of makes him stand out. But yeah. I don't know. Whatever it's worth. I whatever. The other thing too, it's an art form. Whatever you want to do on stage, who's who are we to tell you what to do and what not to do? You know. I like the ideas. I'm gonna I'm gonna work them in. It's good tips. Okay. I I Just can tell a good I can tell a good idea from a bad one. Finally. Oh, just did you say? Hashtag just the tip. Yeah, yeah. And I'm part Jewish, so. (laughs) (laughs) All right, sorry, (laughs) low-hanging. Anyway, so um, this whole landscape with comedy has changed. And do you see yourself learning some technology to do stuff online more? Or you got it figured out where you want it or people to do it or what? Oh, God, I hope not. I'm probably going to find a new hobby. I just, man, this Zoom, this Facebook Live, I get so frustrated setting it up. I want to put my foot through the, the monitor. I might I might pick up a new uh, hobby. I might collect stamps or something. <laughs> Holy I, don't I, can, I don't know if I can handle this. <laughs> Somebody asked me to do them something for them on the internet. So help me with this, help me with that. And I'm like, Lord Almighty, I'm lucky I figured it out. I don't even know what I did. I just didn't give up, I guess. Don't give up. That's a... yeah, don't give up. Does it look like I'm doing anything weird? No, not at all. All right. So if I if I was, you you wouldn't even know, right? I wouldn't even know if you're like if this is your time, I would not know. <laughs> This is my this is my me time. My wife went out to get some groceries, and so. Uh, oh, cool! So, so your wife um, does she have a job that she's missing out on right now because she's at home? In her, uh, she's not homeschooling any grandchildren, is she? No, nope, no, nope. we're uh, we're homeschooling each other. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, she's a she's a uh, she used to work for me, but uh, we're. We are now just uh, working from home now, I guess, or she is doing a lot of the stuff from home. What does she do? She is my office manager for my actual day job. What's your day job? I, f- I forget. I hate, I hate talking about this, but- Okay, uh, let, well, let's move on. We don't know, have- I, I, I was a full-time dentist, but uh, I, haven't gone in, I haven't gone to work in the last two weeks. Um, but I am going to work, uh, what's the day today? Saturday. I mean, I'm going to work Monday to, to, uh, just make sure my patients are okay and, uh, check on, check on an emergencies, check on patients that were, uh, kind of were in pain before this whole thing started. And, you know, I just want to check up on, check up on certain patients. So we are going to go into work Monday and hopefully, I don't know if that'll last till Tuesday, Wednesday. But just to make sure that all my patients are in in good shape. Yeah. Maybe maybe take another week's break. Um, We've had a couple. We've had a couple of fatalities at the hospital, the little town I practice in. So I know, I know it's a concern, and uh, what we do is kind of a high risk, high risk environment. So I don't know if I want to expose my employees to that. So, yeah, we just kind of need to just take it slow and just really keep it to try to keep patients out of pain. Yeah, wow. Have you heard about the miracle cure of coconut oil for an infection in a tooth? (laughs) And do you agree or not? I have to stick to things that are uh, approved by my ADA, the American Dental Association, and the CDA. 
So I cannot condone any type of charcoal, coconut oil, <laughs> human bodily fluids to uh, take care of any uh, dental pain or uh, whitening of teeth. Thank you. <laughs> Fabulous. So as a dent, where, where, where are you the best on stage or in the dental room doing impressions? Oh, I see what you did there. Um, I think I'm better taking impressions than doing them. <laughs> okay, cool. You can have that joke. I know you're dying to do a pun. <laughs> I know, puns, uh, I haven't been much of a pun comic, but I, I've noticed online I've been doing a lot of them lately. That's cool. I love I love putting stuff out there that nobody wants to steal. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had somebody ever steal one of your jokes? A comic? Yeah. Um no comment. <laughs> I think it's a rite of passage and then like it's almost like bragging about like wearing a really expensive necklace and somebody saying oh that's beautiful oh it costs fourteen thousand dollars you know bragging it's a brag complaint you know like somebody stole my joke like you're bragging no yeah it's you know probably the ones that I'm thinking of it's probably more to do with common thought, but there's a couple that there's a couple there where the where the words are almost exactly the same that I I, I got to go back and figure out the date stamp of of when I did it and when the other comic has done it. When you research the date stamp, then you kind of know. I think that might be mine, but I don't know. Who knows? I'm not. I don't like to be that guy who chases down a comic and confronts them. I'm, you know what? There's there's so much to write about that it doesn't really bother me too much, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of like go, I know you saw my joke three days ago. Wait, You sat there and set your alarm <laughs> to wake up at two in the morning three days later. You know, I'm like, oh, whatever. Diego and I pretty much, I mean... We're not confrontational, so if someone else is uh, doing something similar, we just we just kind of most most for the most part just kind of uh, move on and just do more writing. Yeah. If you're if you write a lot, just like you do, stuff like that doesn't phase phase you too much. But if it's an important joke of your set and you're struggling to get that forty five minutes to an hour, I'll still use it. You know, even though someone else is. I think some other people are using the joke. You know, I just don't want to. I'm just not confrontational. Yeah. I don't usually, but um, but for the most part, we just move on. You know. So. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm, I my whole life, you know, I was programmed that I was very shy, and I'm not. But I was programmed that way, and I was programmed that I'm sensitive and everything makes me cry, and that's not the truth. And so I was raised to, uh, told this and that. And um, so I never confronted anything my whole life. Never knew how I felt about anything because I wasn't allowed to have feelings. And now I have feelings and I have a voice and I can have power. And it's like, oh, get out of my way. I'm going to do whatever I want. <laughs> That's good. So like, uh, you know, so... Uh, 50% of that is, is going to be stage worthy. That's why you got to keep, uh, that's why you got to keep churning it out. All right. Thank I was doing a, I was writing some, but then you got to take the criticism too. Like I was running some ideas by Diego this morning. Um, I was looking up on the internet, like lists of phobias and there's a phobia for everything. Scared of, scared of Jewish people, scared of Germans, scared of making money. And so I was trying to write a joke like, you know, it's not that I'm broke. I have a medical condition called whatever the scared of money phobia was. I forget what it is now. Diego outright messaged me, says, dude, this joke, this premise is doing zero for me. Wow. You just, yeah, you just got to be open to the criticism, you know. Um, 
either work it out again to see if you can make it funny or just drop it. Yeah. So I have notebooks full of stuff that I just abandoned. I but that's why you just got to keep you just got to keep churning it out. Yes. That's the message, I guess, you know. Yeah. Well, you have taken a nice break from going through all your family's possessions in your garage. And yes. I, again, yeah. am so great. thankful for this time. Oh, thank you. And, uh, yeah, send us some clips. I'd be more than happy to to uh, check it out and give you whatever, whatever my opinion's worth. Uh, it's worth a lot to me, and you're worth a lot to me. Thank you so very much, Jimmy Earl. I appreciate the interview time. Thank you. Thank Take you. Care. Okay, bye. Take care. Bye. Love you lots. How do I get out of this? There. Let's see here. Stop video. Okay, stop video. End meeting. Bye, Jimmy. Can't see me, but bye. Ah. <sighs>